Into the Badlands Episode 5, Snake Creeps Down. This was a great episode leading up to the season finale. It's unfortunate that the first season is already almost over, but I have heard that we're getting a season 2, which is really good. I heard it, um, I read an article, it was from Daniel Wu himself, or Sonny, um, there hasn't been like any official confirmation yet, but he said that, so hopefully that's 100% and we'll be getting a season 2 for the show, because it's been freaking amazing. Every episode is just like action, some action thing just blew my freaking mind, but this was a really fun episode. Um, before I forget, I really want to talk about um, this the theory that I was talking about in the last episode where they had a lot of weird stuff happening, some random things were shown that kind of place this in like an actual timeline where it's sort of you know far off in the future where things kind of reverted back to lesser technologies and in this episode they kind of confirmed that a little bit because in the beginning and they, they do this in passing it was like it was nothing they're walking through the forest and Sonny's talking to MK and they basically go past what I believe was like an old gas station it was like a gas station sign and I believe that random thing that was just sticking up in the background was like an old um fuel pump so, I believe that was the gas station. There is a part when Ryder goes to the dude with the braids. I don't know why I can never remember his name. Waldo. They talk about, uh, or no, it wasn't with Waldo. It was with his grandfather. He mentions, like, oh, it's probably carved from some image of the old world or something like that. So, they can basically confirm that this is kind of, like, in a weird version of the future that somehow feels like it's, you know, sort of old, you know, plantation-style days. But I thought that was interesting, so I wanted to kind of talk about that before I forgot, because it was a really minor you know, little thing. But there was a ton of big stuff in this episode, for sure. And, of course, I'll save the ending for last, because that was, like, just the crazy action scene. And that crazy last, the last couple seconds just was like, holy crap, I can't believe that just happened. But there was a ton of stuff that I couldn't really believe in this episode. We have... Ryder going to his grandfather, so we meet his grandfather, and we're introduced to, you know, I think a lot of people are going to make the joke that they're like the Illuminati's with the little, you know, because he had like the little almost full triangle thing, which I thought was funny, I was like, oh, people are totally going to say that's the Illuminati, but he does have this organization, and when Ryder leaves, he's like, tell, you know, get word to the others that there's a dark one that needs to be rooted out inside of, you know, the, the fort. So, they're going to be going after MK now, which, just so many targets on that kid right now. But they're going to be going after him, which I, you know, that's definitely a season two type of thing. Because, you know, I'm sure we won't get all the information that we need just in the very next episode. But it was a very um, big aspect to add to the show in this episode. It was like this big religion thing. And we actually get history about um, Lydia and Quinn and how they first met and how... Lydia's father was like, you know, I didn't realize I'd lost her, you know, until she actually met Quinn, but I'd lost her long before that. So we get that backstory, we get kind of the info on how long it's been since Ryder has seen his grandfather, which wasn't since he'd been in the um, crazy accident where he got his toes chopped off and everything. So, you know, he hadn't seen him in forever, Lydia doesn't talk to her father whatsoever, so it was pretty interesting. We got introduced to the grandfather. So he's, you know, still alive and he's actually a fairly important figure to this, you know, sort of fairly, you know, unknown group at this point. But based on the trailer, they'll definitely have a, a portion of next week's episode, which I'm looking forward to. And I, I can't wait to see what they do with the season finale. But the action, as always, really good. I loved the beginning when they're in the forest and um, I thought it was funny how they did it, but then it got really cool. But when MK was about to step on, like, the little bear trap, and Sonny knew it, and he runs up and he stops him, instead of doing it like a normal TV show, it's like, wait, like, you know, watch out, you're about to step on something, he just grabbed him and just flipped him backwards, and I was like, he couldn't have done that in any other way, like, he already had his hand on him, and he was just like, boom, and he just flipped him backwards, it looked cool. But at the same time, I was like, that was really funny, because it was so dramatic that he had to you know, grab him by the shoulder and just, like, literally flip him backwards instead of just being, like, you know, stop and just pulling him back. It was just like, man, that was a bit much. And, he, you know, lands and hurts himself and everything. But then Sonny does something else super cool where he jumps and kicks the tree super hard and makes all, like, all the... They weren't acorns, but, like, all the nuts fall out of the trees and sets off all the bear traps. 
I was like, that was actually pretty sweet. They all, you know, snap up. And it wasn't symmetrical, so I liked how you got to see some of them snap up. And then it's like, oh, that was really cool. And then we just hear one snap off in the side, and you just hear a scream like, ah! Which was, once again, that was kind of funny, because he was just yelling out of nowhere. So we had the guy from the last episode who actually, like, was the one other person seemingly to make it out of that fight. So he hit, get his leg was all messed up. I thought, I figured it was just like, you know, a normal bear trap, but the way they're curved, like the spikes, are, you know, they kind of snap bones out of place and his bone was just coming out of his leg, which I didn't expect. So he was out of commission and then Tilda gets herself, you know, messed up because she goes and tries to warn Sunny to, you know, get out because she's kind of asking too many questions and she got the widow a bit curious so she knew that she had to warn mk and um i said sunny first but she went to warn mk of course um and tell him like you gotta get that guy out of here and then she gets caught by sunny and then i don't even know the other guy's name who was like kind of mk's friend from the first episode i was wondering what his role in the show was gonna be but apparently it's nothing i'm pretty sure that was the same guy but Clearly, it was he doesn't have a role because he's dead now. I mean, it starts off he gets Mike Tyson, um, you know, gets his ear bit off. So that sucked for him, and then he gets killed by MK because MK have to has to save uh, Tilda because obviously he cares more about her. And that was very interesting when he did that in this episode when he used his power. It wasn't like brute strength it was almost like and this is like the best example i can use it's very appropriate but it was a lot like the force because they show like a wave come out of his hand it wasn't like he pushed you know the gate that was in front of him he basically just did like that and like a wave shot out of his hand it was like he had that much strength that he could just stop and all that power was you know turned you know converted into like just a gust of air and he blows the door off and he you know, kills the guy, sends him into the rack. So that was very interesting. It was different than what we'd seen before, where, you know, every other time, it was sheerly physical. It was just, he could take a hit, and he would, you know, punch stuff, or he, you know, had enhanced senses, like when the, um, when the mirror broke in the first episode, and he caught that little shard. And, excuse me, this was a bit different. It was very interesting to see him do that, because I was like, oh, I wasn't expecting him to have, like, just basically full you know full on force powers and he just blows the thing away. I was like that was actually very interesting. It was a different uh level, you know, to his ability. So that was very cool. Uh something else that happens, you know, much earlier. The stuff with Vale and Quinn I wasn't expecting. He's basically just like, you know, I know you know exactly what happened and she actually asked him about you know why he killed her parents. And then, of course, he does, like, the super technical thing, although he was, like, half technical about it, and then the other half was him just flat out lying, because he was like, I didn't kill him, which he did, but, you know, obviously, like, he was telling the truth, like, it was Sonny's katana that did it, but obviously he was the one that went in the house and, you know, chopped them both up, so I was like, well, part of that's true, because it was Sonny's blade that took him down, but... Obviously, it was you that did it. And, of course, the you know, the way he's doing it is Sonny will choose me, you know, over her. So, and he might be right. Like, who knows how that's going to play out. Like, maybe, I don't know. I'm not sure how it's going to work out. Because, of course, he tells her that. And then he tells Sonny, like, oh, I don't want you seeing her anymore. So, of course, that's going to be an issue where he has to hide that. And, I don't know, maybe stay away from her a bit more. Like, I'm not sure. I mean, he knew to begin with, you know, Quinn knew that they were together anyway. So he could have people on him, which I would assume he would, because otherwise it's like, where's the Baron? Like, oh, he's you know off in this random city or whatever. So I'm sure he has people, you know, following Sonny, especially considering he's his regent. But I, I really don't know what to expect from you know, kind of what he did. And he kind of played them both a little bit in this episode. He lies to Vale, and then he kind of forces Sonny to not be around her anymore so I don't really know because he asked of course he asked like is it completely you know is it serious so very worse worrisome just his ideas in general and then of course that added on to the ending where he saw what MK did which everyone did like everyone that matters saw what just happened there I was like okay the only person that was missing out of that scene that saw MK 
kind of go into his crazy mode was Lydia, honestly, because whatever answers she has, it, you know, she has them and she's not saying anything. So there's something there. Um, I felt like she might know more than even her father because he kind of was just like, oh, it's just this urban legend. It was probably carved from an image of the old world. So I feel like she might know a bit more than even her father does. And he, you know, he's just on like, oh, it's just like a legend or whatever. And she might know the truth about it. So I'm not sure, what, you know, what that is. And my initial theory was that maybe she was from there when she was very, very young and she still remembered it or something. But that seemed to kind of go out of the window in this episode with her father. But everyone there at the ending, Sonny saw him do it again. Tilda saw him do it again. Um... The widow saw him do it for the first time, so she knows that Tilda was lying, which may or may not matter, because she probably figured it out in the beginning of this episode anyway, and I think that's why she really went to the compound, because it's like, oh, okay. You know, she figured things out, it's like, she's been kidnapped, I'm going to get into the compound, and I'm sure I'll find my way, you know, across this kid again, and I'll see exactly what I want to see. And that's exactly what she got. So... She knows that MK is really the person that she's looking for. I don't know what to expect from Quinn now that he knows what happens, you know, with MK's ability. And just how that's going to play, you know, around with Sonny. Because, of course, he's not going to say anything. He's going to act like he doesn't know. So, I don't know what's going to happen. And I was wondering, as soon as MK killed the other guy and he, like, actually broke out and he was dead on just on the rack... I was like, how in the world are they going to explain this? Because there was three of them. Tilda was locked up. And then, you know, the widow comes in. So, ultimately, it's just like, there has to, you know, basically exactly what happens. Like, someone had to have turned on someone else for these two women to, you know, take out all three of you and, you know, still survive and escape. So, I don't know what Lai's going to come up with, but at this point... It really doesn't matter. I was curious before, you know, they showed Quinn, you know, like just behind the gate and everything. I was like, I don't know how they're going to get out of this. And now they won't because Quinn knows exactly what happened. And I just don't know what to think. I'm, I'm very excited for this season finale. We also don't know um, what happened with Jade. She, I don't even know. Like somehow she got poisoned. There was no scene where anything seemed to happen where she ate something random or drank anything random. She helped the people on the fields. She cut the little thing. I highly doubt it's possible, but the only thing I can think of is that Lydia somehow poisoned the knife that she she had. That's literally the only thing I can think of. And it couldn't have been in the ointment because, of course, Lydia had that all over her blistered hand. So, it, it, you know, unless she had... Uh, built up an immunity to whatever, you know, she may have put in there. But I, I don't know what to think. I mean, we didn't see anything happen. I don't know if this was... I don't know if Jade does survive. Maybe it was some insane plan where Jade's like, oh, I'll do something to myself and make it seem like it was Lydia. I just don't know. So I, I'm not sure what to expect. It obviously wasn't the soup. Like, even if she tasted it, it wasn't that because Quinn was totally fine. But I don't know. I'm very excited for this uh, season finale. It sucks that it's almost over already because this is definitely one of my favorite new shows. I love the action. Um, and I guess to actually talk about it like I always do. In this one, I think my favorite moment was... Uh, for one, I noticed Sonny was kicking like crazy um, when he was fighting against the Widow. Like Every time he would like counter, he would like kick her and she'd fall down. So he did, like I think, four kicks in this one, which I thought was interesting. But after she did, like, the sort of wall spin thing, which I thought was pretty cool, I was like, oh, that's why she stayed in that stance. Because I was like, I wonder why she's, you know, in that weird stance. Outside of, you know, it's just different. And then I was like, oh, okay, now it makes perfect sense. She used that to spin across. But when he kicked her, and she went back, and then she, like, hopped back up, and it was, like, kind of like when, I guess, like, anyone, really, who can do that when they have to go back and they push off with their hands... But she doesn't use her hands and she just like hops off her back. I was like, that was super freaking sweet to me. I was like, that was an awesome moment in their fight. And then it got even cooler. Like she hops up after being kicked down and then he drop kicks her and she actually flies through the wall. And, you know, Sonny was insanely badass in this one. Like they were, 
I've, God, they have like four different layers to this fight. They switch weapons a million times. Or she switched definitely more than he did because she lost her blades in the beginning and then she switched to, um, I believe, the maces or whatever they're called when they're, when they're on change they're technically called something else. But, you know, she switches to those and uses them like, you know, nunchaku. So she's like flipping them around and stuff, which I thought was cool. And then he switches to um, a shield once he loses his blade. And then he gets a spear, and she has, like, the, you know, Mortal Kombat Cabal things, the hooks, I don't know what they're called, I can't remember. But it was really cool, and then he did, um, he did a move, I've seen it a, a bunch of times in, like, martial arts stuff, but I like when I see it. And when he dropped the spear, and he kicked it, and it hit her in the chest, and then it came back to him, I like when I see that in movies, and I haven't seen that done in, like, years. I haven't seen that anyone actually do that move before. Or I, I just haven't seen anyone do that move in a long time. So I was like, that's really cool. Love seeing that again because it's been forever. But it was a great, great fight. I love how um, it also had two parts because we had Tilda versus the other guy who, obviously, he's dead. I, I'm not even going to bother remembering his name now because he's gone. <laughs> but we had their fight kind of going back and forth and MK having to figure out like what he's going to do and that he's locked up, which as soon as it happened... I was like, okay, either she's just going to flat out beat this guy or MK's going to have to cut himself. Like, either she's going to beat him and take off and try to help the Widow and then, you know, they would team up on Sunny, and then that's how they escape. Or, you know, MK would have to cut himself like he did. And I liked the fact that it was going back and forth. Of course, the Sunny versus Widow thing was kind of the epic side of the two battles, but I still enjoy sort of the hand-to-hand -hand stuff that they had with Tilda and the other guy, because it was pretty cool, uh, just to see, like, you know, like, these are, like, the high-ranking people, and they're just, like, flipping and spinning, and Sonny also did something, I think it was, I think it was after he kicked her through the wall, he did, like, a, a triple spin in the air, like, he didn't, he did that flip, and he didn't land on the ground until he was finished, he did, like, a full two flips in midair, I was like, that was really cool. Super, just, the wire flew is just really fun to watch. But it was cool to watch them go back and forth between those two fights. And then he actually uh, cuts the Widow in this uh, episode. And initially, I thought when he did it, he cut her, like, straight across the stomach, which is, can be very deadly depending on how deep, because obviously you got a lot of stuff in your stomach, and you don't want that to just start, you know, spilling out of you, but... He actually cuts her, like, right on the side of her stomach. So I was like, okay, she's wounded. And she's kind of been cut through, you know, on, on the side. But she's definitely okay, and she survives that. And Tilda takes off, and then basically just end of the episode, Sunny can't find him. They escape somehow in the darkness. And then Quinn just being right there. And he, you know, basically saw everything that happened. So... I can't wait for this season finale. I think this was a great episode leading up to it. Um, we also had the compass. In the beginning of the episode, Sunny's compass fit into the uh, burnt-out pocket of the book, and it set his compass in the right direction, so now he has um, a way to go to get to... Um, kind of to get outside of the Badlands. I can't remember what they call it. It's like... Um, it's something like A-S-H something. I can't remember the name of the outside city. But he's they've got their path now. I don't know how that works. I thought that was pretty cool though. And it has me really curious. Because he had that book. Or he had the locket. But MK was the one that actually had the book. So I don't know what that means. 100%. I don't know if they're meant to go together. Or you know, maybe maybe there are a lot of people that had you know, these pocket watches, and they were all meant to go inside of these books, if anyone had a book, and you just fit one in, and it'll tell you how to get back home, but I'm looking forward to this finale, of course, though, I want to know what you guys thought about this episode, so please comment below, let me know your favorite parts, your least favorite parts, and there was a ton of stuff that happened in this episode, so I want to know what you guys think is going to happen between Sunny and Vale, with, you know, everything that Quinn kind of did to them, what in the world is going on with Jade? Did Lydia poison her? Did she, you know, did she do like sort of the almost reverse psychology type of deal where she poisons herself and then makes it seem like Lydia? And also, of course, what is Quinn going to do now that he knows, you know, MK's secret? Because you know, we only have one episode, so there's so much. And it is the season finale, so maybe, you know, it's kind of the point. Like, 
this is the penultimate episode, and then we have the ultimate episode with everything coming to a head. Plus, we're going to get to see Ryder kind of enacting his final plan to take everyone out, and it seems like everyone is kind of coming to the fort by the next episode, and I don't know what that even means. We're going to have Ryder's grandfather there, so that's going to be a crazy religious group coming in to kill MK. We have... Sonny trying to get out as fast as he can. He had someone's head. I would assume it was the kids um, who died. The MK killed. So he's probably taking his head to the the boat guy. We have uh, Zephyr coming in. Seemingly, depending, you know, based on how they cut it, I think that Zephyr and Sonny were about to fight again. That could have just been a totally different scene. But it seems like everything is coming to a head, as it should for a good season finale. And considering this show... Who knows what that means? Jacoby was in the trailer. Um, Jacoby was fighting against MK, if I remember right, like towards the end of the trailer. So, a lot of craziness to be expected for this season finale. I'm really looking forward to it. But like I said, I want to know what you guys thought about this episode. And also, what you guys want to see for this season finale. And, you know, if you guys even want a season two, I'll probably ask that again next week. But, I do want to know if you guys want a season two uh, for this show so far. Out of these, you know, just these couple episodes we've had so far. If you're interested in the second season or if the show's kind of fallen off for you, which I don't even remotely, I couldn't comprehend how it could, but I wouldn't know either way. So please comment below, let me know, and thanks for watching.